I was uh, telling you about uh, these technologies, which would be the applications for uh, someone who has to who wants to revive some moment on history and uh, make some historic uh, images on the. Yeah, I, I think we're already seeing uh, lots of applications of AI for creativity in general, and um, there are a couple examples of people using AI to, to colorize photos to that were originally in black and white or to animate uh, still photos. So there's a lot of potential to you know to, to imagine things that that didn't exist or didn't happen, but there's also a lot of potential to reimagine things that did happen and and make connections to the past. And um, you know, I, I think that whole thread of creativity within AI is going to be really powerful and, and really um, valuable for us, you know, understanding ourselves, understanding our, our past. Of course, we have to, you know, think about all the uses, good and bad, of that technology, but I think the potential is really, really great. Okay, uh, what's the future of this uh, technology? What's the future for David Cox development? Yeah, so I mean, what we work on uh, at IBM and MIT, the MIT IBM Watson AI Lab that I direct, uh, we really are interested in how can we make AI easier to use? Uh, how do we make it so that more people can use AI to solve problems? You know, at the end of the day, all, all we want to do is to have impact in the world by solving hard problems. And uh, you know, the company I work for, we work, we serve clients across many different industries, all the kind of plumbing behind the scenes of the world, you know, the, in the financial sector and in shipping and in manufacturing. And we're, we're really asking how can we make AI make those jobs easier so you can, you can, you can solve hard problems, make, make our jobs more, uh, you know, um, you know, take away tasks that are that are uh, sort of drudgery and let you focus on the things that humans are uniquely good at and really uh, just make people more effective. Yes. I was uh, imagining uh, yesterday that maybe in the future people can access, I don't know, uh, can reconstruct uh, someone's dream mm. and make their experience the dream like yeah. this. Yeah, so the, there, there's a lot of interesting intersections today between artificial intelligence and neuroscience. And actually, I, I come from a neuroscience background. So I used to be, uh, I used to have a lab at Harvard where we studied both neuroscience and artificial intelligence. And there are lots of ways in which today uh, people are using AI techniques to help you know, decode information from brain scans. So there actually are experiments that people are doing where they have people sleep inside of a, an MRI scanner and then they can, while they're dreaming, and then they can decode those dreams. So some of these things that would have sounded crazy, like science fiction just 10 or 20 years ago, are suddenly becoming a reality. Um, and at the same time also the study of the, human, of the brain, you know, and in particular the human brain, is also inspiring new ideas in artificial intelligence. So I think we're having, you know, things going back and forth where, um, you know, increasingly we're going to have an interplay between these two fields. And, you know, the sky's the limit in terms of, you know, what could we experience, uh, you know, things like brain machine interfaces where you could actually, you know, experience or interact with a computer. Those are many years off, but uh, a lot of really interesting research going on. and. Um, you know, again, the technology is moving fast, the, the sky is really the limit, and I think we just all need to think about how do we use these technologies uh, to, to make our lives better. Okay, uh, we live in a time people uh, are not uh, being uh, creative at these times. Uh, th these generations are less creative than the older ones. So what can you tell the future generations about these things? Because we always believe this is the last uh, technology ever made. We can, uh, can't make newer things. How can you make the path to, to see that creativity? What can you think that can inspire inspiring them to, to creativity, you know, yeah. to, to create newer things? But I, I, I'm not sure that people are less creative than they were before. And, and in many ways, um, the tools we have today to be creative are amazing. So you think about, um, you know, and, and artists, for instance, have always been technologists. They've always been on the cutting edge of technology. You know, from thinking about new ways to make paints to thinking about new ways to make a photograph to you embracing digital tools. There's whole new genres of art uh, that are enabled uniquely by 
digital tools. And I think what's going to happen is AI is just going to be another tool uh, to, to let us to kind of unleash our creativity, to let us do things that we couldn't do before. Everything from the creation of visual art and traditional media that we've already seen, but also interactive art. Uh, and I think the sort of day-to-day -day creativity also that we all do in our daily lives and we don't even think about it, but really is a creative process where we're thinking about how to make a product or how to solve a problem. Those kinds of creativity are, are really important. Uh, and AI is going to increasingly be uh, a helper uh, for us in those, and you know, sort of a co-pilot for us, just the same way that a new paint would allow a painter to make a more beautiful piece of art, or a new photographic technique, or a new kind of camera helps a photographer capture their artistic vision. I think AI is going to increasingly help us you know, realize the visions that we have, the, the things we want to achieve in the world make real. Okay, there is um, a scary theory of many, many people as, like us that uh, some way over the future, uh, AI is going to dominate the world. What can you say about that? Yeah, so there, there's a lot of concern in the press about you know, AI becoming conscious or, or even things like taking away our jobs by replacing us. You know, I think uh, where we are today with AI, those aren't near-term threats. Uh, you know, those are things we should talk about. Uh, they're interesting, you know, philosophical discussions. But where the technology is today, uh, we're not really in a place where those are are, are real threats. Um, and and you know, I think what some of those discussions do is to distract from some of the more pressing discussions we need to have about AI. Like, how do we make sure that AI is fair and unbiased? Uh, so th there's a lot of work going on now where we're turning uh, decision making over to algorithms, but we're not. If we're not careful, then uh, those algorithms can reproduce biases that, that we ourselves would have, uh, or they may not might not be fair, or uh, they might have unintended consequences of the technology. So I, I think really what we're focused on in our research today is we're not worrying about the science fiction uh, sort of story just yet. What we're really worried about is how do we responsibly produce AI that we can trust, that really helps us and that really augments us. And, and that's really the entire posture that we have, is how do we build AI that's a tool that makes us better, you know, that augments us rather than replaces us, that, that works for us, uh, that, that doesn't work against us.